All right, welcome to Harley Davidson Pan America 1250. Now this is a beast. You have to make the comparison to the big GS 1250. This actually has a electronically lowering uh, rear end. So when you come to a stop, the bike will automatically lower itself. So it's easier to handle. And that's a very nice, nice creature comfort, if, especially if you are not a tall person. And maybe if you are older, it's easier to come to a stop with this one. Let's try to pull the windscreen a little bit up. To let get a little bit less buffeting. Overtaking at 6th gear is no problem, of course, there's plenty of power and the windscreen is very nice if you want to do some touring. It almost completely eliminates all the buffeting from my helmet. There's still a little bit of wind coming to, my, to the top of my helmet. The bike feels rather stable, but not as smooth as I was expecting it to be. It is a little bit jumpy on this road because Finnish roads are never that smooth. I do feel the front end is a little bit bouncy. Actually surprisingly bouncy because I think the KTM 890 on this road was way smoother. So it's a bit weird. Maybe it is an adjustment that you can do to the front forks. But for my taste it feels a little bit hard. It's a really bouncy front end. I am in road mode at the moment, so let's try if we switch it to... Now it's in automatic, so let's try that for a while. Okay, the suspension is exactly the same, it may don't, makes no difference. Now we're in rain mode. You can feel it pulls back the power just a little bit. Sport, and now we're in off-road mode, so I have no ABS in the rear. But it doesn't really get the bounciness of the suspension. I have no idea what's happening, but the front end feels really bouncy on this tarmac section. Let's turn here. I'm not sure if this is a gravel road, but it could be. The mirrors are nice and big, as they should be on a bike this size. The dashboard itself is pretty nice. Okay, okay. I have no idea about this road, what is coming up, so I'm not gonna ride that fast. chill ride in this gravel road does feel a little bit more comfortable but I don't know the suspension is still a little bouncy for my taste I would like it to be more smooth in this kind of bike it should be a smooth travel machine and this is definitely at the moment it's not that and it is a um, test drive bike so I would assume that it would be more comfortable but so far it's really not it is kind of hard you know but it is nice even though this is a heavy beast you can feel it when you try to go backwards <laughs> it's really heavy it's nice that the suspension lowers itself down automatically so you don't have a problem reaching the ground because otherwise this is a pretty tall bike let's try standing up a little bit I'm not really gonna take this in any rough terrain because it's a test drive bike and it's such a heavy beast that I don't wanna it's not really meant for that but this is a nice little bit of gravel that we can test this on the standing position is really nice actually it's really comfortable 
I am a little surprised about how harsh and crashy this suspension is. But enough about that. Let's test the acceleration here. Let's just put it back to road mode. Let's see how does it feel. Oh yeah, there's a lot of power here. <laughs> Nobody is gonna have any problem with the power on this bike. But I just noticed that I have a... Why is the blinker blinking? I have an engine light on the dashboard. No idea what's that about. But I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check if I... Just right here. Turn it off. Turn it back on again. Oh, still, I have the engine light. So there is some kind of a problem with the bike. So we should probably return this and uh, say that there is an engine light. That's pretty funny though. What do people say about Harley Davidson reliability? Uh, it doesn't look good. <laughs> this, the, this is the only Harley Davidson that I've ever ridden and uh, now it's ha having some kind of a problem. Wow, it's so easy to drive too fast in this. You don't even notice. But there is cruise control so you could use that to stay within the speed limit. But cruising like this what it's meant to be doing this bike this style of bike it's uh, it's an okay okay experience but the suspension is really hard I don't know what's up with that maybe it needs some kind of a suspension tune-up or adjustment it's constantly bouncing Wow this is a uh, pretty disappointing Maybe I should do the ride on the GS next and see, like right after this and see the difference. But the windscreen is nice for touring, especially now that it's in the upper position. It does remove the wind pretty much completely. The blinker button is really, you can't feel it. I left it blinking many times on this trip. Like now it went on for some reason. And you don't really feel what it's doing. so. The controls are maybe not the best. Just by saying something with this short experience, I would definitely hesitate on recommending this bike instead of the GS1250. I don't know, I don't like the comfort on this one. This is uh, and even the steering feels a little numb and, and weird. Could be the tires as well, because this is not a brand new bike. It's actually 40,000 on the odometer, so okay, that explains a lot, because this doesn't really feel like a brand spanking new bike. It feels like it's been ridden. But yeah, 40,000 and the engine light is on, doesn't really promise very, very good. But it's only one bike, so I can't really say anything more about that. But let's go back because the engine light is on and I, I don't want to ride it any more than I have to.